Um, okay. Do you have your phone nearby? No. Okay. Yeah, I can actually just send the uh, live to you afterward if you want. Okay. Um, but you'll see it and you can share it. I mean, you'll just see it on the Tribe Finder page if you go there. You'll see okay. it there too, but I'll also message it to you so you don't have to scroll through a bunch of stuff to try to figure it out. Um, hold on just a second. Let me tell this guy something. No worries. Behind Tribe Finder? Not behind Tribe Finder, just Tribe Finder itself. Yeah, there's a lot of entities around Tribe Finder. <laughs> just a lot of this and that about Tribe Finder. But it's just the one with the actual flower of life on it. Okay, I got it. Yeah, so, um, okay. Well, so um, basically we've got 30 minutes here. I am going to... Um, introduce you. Can you tell me how to say your last name, please? Ignatiev. Ignatiev? Yeah, I G N A T I E F F. Got it. All right. And then what is the actual terminology for what you're going to be explaining to people so I can um, tell them? Okay, there's a new paradigm toolkit. I'm writing it down. Yeah. Toolkit. Okay. And the operating system is called the inflow matrix. So I N F L O W matrix inflow matrix. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, um, so we'll go live. I will introduce you. And then the way that uh, I typically do this is um, at first, when I introduce you, we're going to be split screen. And then whenever you, you know, just basically start presenting or talking about what you're doing, um, then it's going to be just you on the screen and I'll mute myself. So um, people can really just focus on you instead of like my reactions. I want them to really focus on you. Um, and then uh, at the end, we'll go ahead and go over any questions that came up while it was going on. How's that? Sounds good. Okay, cool. All right, so it takes me just a couple seconds to get this done. All right, so again, working with Zoom, so it may be up and it may not be. We will know in about two seconds when it shows me, and here we are. Okay, cool. Let's see. Let me get out of this and get us on gallery. Hey, everyone. So this is Elijah Ignatieff. Um, let me actually, before we get going too much, let me um, share this video into a couple of groups. So as you guys are coming in, um, be sure to let us know who you are, where you're from. We're going to give you about 30 seconds or so as I am sharing this. Um, and then we're going to get into some just downright brilliant stuff in a second. So um, bear with us. I want to, there, okay, there it is, and I'm going to share into a couple groups. One, build and expand, and then another one, tribe finder member group, and we're doing a third one into the Lightworker live feed because we love to show them some love. So, let me start typing it out, it looks like. Lightworker, Lightworker. There it is. Done and done, friends. Okay, so, um, looks like we have a couple of you here. Let me pop into this. Um, let's see. 
There we go. Well, good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, like I said at the very beginning, if you weren't here the second that we went live, I don't blame you. It's hard to do that. Uh, we have Elijah Ignatieff here. Um, he is going to be presenting um, some things that have a lot to do with sacred geometry. I'm going to let him explain more because I would not do it any justice at all. Let's just be honest, right? Um, it is called the New Paradigm Toolkit, and the operating system itself is called an inflow matrix. So you guys are going to want to hear about this. Grab a pen and paper in case you want to write some things down, which you probably will. So Elijah, I'm going to let you take it away here, and I'm going to mute myself. Um, again, guys, any time that you have questions, go ahead and pop them in uh, to the uh, comments. We can be able to take care of them after he's done presenting what he's presenting. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Take it away, Elijah. Well, thank you very much. This is quite an honor to be here. And this is one of the first times to truly share my work, which has been uh, about 25 years of research and development into something called the New Paradigm Toolkit, which is a set of maps, game boards, card sets, processes, and software all put together to help individuals, uh, groups, organizations, and communities to learn, create, communicate, and heal together. That may sound like quite a bit, and it, and it is, uh, but we're moving from an old paradigm of thinking based upon fear into a new paradigm based upon love. And we can make that distinction in the present moment by just looking at the past. And in this present moment, we look back at the past, and that's the old paradigm. And in this present moment, we look to the future, and that's the new paradigm. And so we make that choice in the present moment for where we put our attention and intention. And that is within most spiritual traditions, they speak about intention and attention as being you know, the focal point. And to me, the attention is the focus of the mind and the intention is the focus of the heart. The heart. Now, you have a very, I think, a unique group of spiritual entrepreneurs. And I believe that it's the spiritual entrepreneurs that are going to be the way showers or the leading edge or the fringe or the ones that want to do the transformation. Because to leave the old paradigm of fear we have to do something different. Our, our, our ways are not working. It's so obvious as a species that we're heading towards a cliff like a bunch of lemmings if we don't change the course of our entire species. And each of us is part of that. So how do we do that? So these tools are set up to help to recalibrate the mind. The mind gets conditioned from when you're born and by the time you're about four, five, six, or seven, you are sort of your schemata is frozen. Your belief system can be quite frozen. It's like a log jam in a stream. The beavers put all the beliefs together and they get locked there. But there's an actual flow of consciousness that is moving through us. And so our minds are actually structures for us to process the information coming through us. So if we get brainwashed in a certain way, then that's how we are going to see the world until we reformat our mind. And most real spiritual paths are about reformatting the mind and introducing a new belief and value system. Just let that go. So what I've been doing is looking at how does the mind organize? How does the mind uh, be used as a willing servant rather than the master? Because when our mind takes control of us, it is not actually us. It is a part of us. And our spirit and our soul uses it as an interface with this world, but we don't have much of an operating manual about how it works. And every religion or spiritual tradition in some way is saying this is how it works. And usually the reference point that they use is some sort of map. So if you look at the Kabbalah and you look at all the Sephiroth that are in this arrangement, if you look at the... Uh, medicine wheel, and you look at the arrangement of the concepts, all of these spiritual traditions have some sort of map, and what they are doing in many ways is they are mapping values. They are mapping values like gratitude, they are mapping values like love, they are mapping values like courage, or mercy, or integrity, or honesty, or responsibility, or accountability, or clarity, 
for this great amount of wonderful sounding words. And what's interesting is this is also the central reference point for businesses. If you look at most conscious businesses or ethical businesses, they are speaking about, we have a different value system. And what do they do is they point on the wall and they have a list or usually a hierarchy of values. And if you look at any type of personal development work, if you look at any type of uh, group learning, at some point they will get to values. And it seems to be a pretty big thing about choosing these values. And what happened for me is I was studying all of these spiritual traditions and like most questers and trying to find the truth and trying to find what worked for me. And I would come across these maps and I'd look at them and study them. And I'd like, these are great maps, but there was something missing and I couldn't quite understand them. I don't know if you've ever seen the little Alice Bailey Blue Books. It's another spiritual tradition and they have massive amounts of maps. And they talk of different dimensions. They talk of different planes. They talk of of the universe being organized by seven levels and we're in the seventh level of the seventh level and we're like at the bottom. We're like at this teeny weeny little bit at the bottom and there's this whole universe around us but our minds are not kind of conceptually dialed in because we've been fed a bunch of illusions based upon control mechanisms that were put in place by whoever is the the powers that be who want to keep the masses and the people down in a certain way. And so most prophets come along and they say, hey guys, well, it's not quite this way. You got to do it this way. But whatever they're saying is context dependent upon the time that they're in. And now here we are, you know, spiritual entrepreneurs on Facebook, you know, maybe 300 years ago, we'd all be rounded up and burned and thrown into a pit because we believe that the, the color of that mountain was blue and still, instead of red. And now we get to talk about what, whatever we want live to the world and not be killed. Like this is a huge step. Like we, we, we have, you know, in our lifetime, this was impossible when I grew up. We could not, you know, film ourselves. We could not show, distribute to a, a larger target audience. We couldn't do this. This was impossible. It was always controlled. And so we moved from the impossible into the possible. And right now, shows like this of what you're doing is like the fringe, the leading edge. The, 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 the people like me are, have been hiding, have been ostracized, have been dismissed, have been shut down, have been, you're a kook, you're a freak, you're a whatever. But actually, you know, we're seeing things which maybe others can't see yet, or we're putting things together that others perhaps haven't put together because we don't buy what we've been sold. We don't believe in these things they're telling us because it doesn't, you know, our intuition is saying something is different. And so we want to create a new media. We want to create a new reference point. We want to create a new feedback system that all of a sudden starts to sort of align with us because our intuition is picking up things that isn't necessarily from normal sources. And that's the big thing about spiritual entrepreneurs is they may be acting from this intuition that's deadly, that's right on. But you can't explain it. You can't explain the source of it. But you just know that you trust it. I mean, that to me is one of the most important things about anything about being a spiritual entrepreneur. Is you're, you're, you feel like you're guided. You feel like you're of service to a higher power. You feel as if your life has purpose because it isn't just about making money. It's about doing something with, that has destiny, doing something that has ethics, doing something that has a real heart that cares about the people, cares about the planet, cares about what's going on. And if we look at the old paradigm of business, it's like hundreds of years of, of atrocities, of, of, of hurtful things, of, of things that right now we couldn't even imagine doing. But 100 years ago, it seemed to be okay. But now it's not. And that's how fast things are, are moving. Like we're actually in this huge transition. So to go from that old paradigm to the new paradigm, we need some tools. And I want to show you something that um, came through, and I'll, I'll tell the truth. This wasn't some log ah, from God. This wasn't some, you know, the, the result of 20 years of research. This came through with a pendulum. And I used a pendulum, and I asked, you know, how many rings? Nine rings came through. 
And then each ring I ask, what did it get divided into? And this is very important. Whatever your hole gets divided into, this sounds a bit rude, but uh, the number, like on the outside, this is 12, this is 13, this is 28, this is 24, this is 20, this is six, this is seven, 72, this is the four, and this is one. So I use the pendulum, I asked it what number, it gave me a numbering sequence, and then afterwards, my mind figured out, oh, this is time. That the outer circle is the 12 uh, signs of the zodiac. So the outer circle, you can put your birth chart, you can put any astrological information you want as the larger cycles. Then you go into here, which is your years, and this is 13 months. So this brings in the 13-month calendar. Then you come into one month, a 28-day cycle for the moon. So now you're bringing in the moon cycle. Then you're bringing in the day cycle, 24 hours. So this wheel is just one part of this wheel. This wheel is just one part of this wheel. So it's like Ezekiel. It's like wheels within wheels within wheels. And then this is the weird part of the switch point. The midpoint has 20, and it's the Mayan glyphs. The Mayan calendar mathematically is actually coordinated with the galactic cycles. The Romans took all the indigenous people and all the people they conquered off the moon cycles because it threw off everybody. We're on a wrong time system. And that's part of the, the great deception or part of the old paradigm or part of whatever you want to call it. Like we're not calibrated to the actual galactic cycles. So the Mayans knew how that works. So this is a this is called the time translator. And so you can connect into the Mayan calendar here, but what also this is, is 20 as a number has a great significance because it's like having 20 amino acids. It's like the base elements for building things. A tetrahedron has four corners. Each corner has a tetrahedron and you have four corners. So when you create a fractal tetrahedron, you have 20 points. So it's like a whole is like when you get all the points together. And, and 20 is also the icosahedron in water. Um, so you, you can put the, the essential elements with the platonic solids and it sort of creates the fabric of the universe in terms of sacred geometry. So then this is the seasons. This, the switch point is the seasons because in, in the course of, of life, you know, summer is very different from winter if you're doing anything, especially if you're an entrepreneur. So you got to plan differently. But these are like 20 people. Then you go into the next one, and this is hours, and the next one is minutes, and the next one is the four directions, and the next one is timelessness in the middle. And you see that there's a beam of light coming out of the center of this, which looks like, you know, this is flat. But then in 3D, this would be coming out because this is actually like a table. This is just a map right now, but I have built a table that you can put crystals and all these beautiful things on, and it's wild what it happens. But here we have levels of consciousness. So we have timelessness, and now what can happen is we can bring in other models. We can bring in Ken Wilber's uh, levels of consciousness. We can bring in power versus force, David Hawkins' levels of consciousness. We can bring in the chakra system, which a lot of people know. So you can sort of imagine yourself in the center of these, these rings and in the cent center of it is our awareness level of where we are placing our attention and intention. Does this all make sense? Are you with me so far? <laughs> Any questions or do you want me to keep going? Usually I've lost people and their eyes are glazing over and they're, 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 they're falling backwards going, I just wanted a coffee. What are you telling me all this for? I am um, I'm following I'm totally following guys if you have any questions or anything um, please feel free to go ahead and add them I don't feel like we're at the place of questions just let, not for me anyway like I feel like I'm following along and uh, if you guys have questions like I said go ahead and ask them and then whenever he's done we can come back and field them but um, good check-in good check-in Elijah I'm gonna mute myself again <laughs> okay okay so that's setting a bit of context. Now, something happened along the way, and it was is to do with values. And it's 
It's looking at the information graphic of how we organize things together on a piece of paper. Now, what we started with is a map, right? So we have this new time map and everything that I was telling you exists. You know, we have a lifetime that we live. We, there are years that, 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 that take place. There are months, there are days, there are seasons. This is not rocket science. This isn't something new. All it is is in a map, putting these different time things, structures together on nine wheels. Now, for most people, who let's say are in the old paradigm, this is way too much. This is like crazy. This is nuts. But it's, it's the big difference is just organizing information in circles rather than squares. And so I think the big shift is we're shifting from the masculine dominated patriarchy into the feminine dominated sort of, I would call it hopefully nurturing um, matriarchy where our larger solar system cycle is about 26,000 years. And what happens in cycles is half the cycle is, is feminine and half the cycle is masculine. So depending upon the time scale you're at, we're blipping back and forth in this kind of wave between the masculine and the feminine in different ways between these two things. And so when your mind moves from linear Roman time that isn't connected or calibrated to reality into something where you're connected and calibrated to a multi-dimensional universe you you are much more in tune with let's say higher self soul uh, divination uh, higher powers whatever you want to call it the mind has to be sort of calibrated and so the values to me are the conduits to godhead they are the connections to the source to creator is through these uh, higher virtues. And so we attempt to learn and realize gratitude and humility and love and these higher virtues. And nearly every prophet in some way is saying, you know, these are good things. You want to use them, just, you know, use them, right? Don't be into the anger or the resentment or all these things. You want to be of a higher frequency. And so what that is, is you are operating at a higher level of frequency in your thinking and your heart and your and your how your body is actually vibrating so spiritual entrepreneurs are very aware of this and to me you're like again a leading edge because business and spirituality have to come together they can't be fighting and then the way you do that is have a conscious value system and so what happened was there was like a discovery or an invention or just pure luck or whatever the heck happened where if you have these time cycles, you can place like a, a primary lens. You can, you, can, you can just go down to one word and go, this is how consciousness is flowing through this word. So words become lenses. You're not just kind of, they're symbols, but they, they actually filter the information that's coming through. And so what you can do is you can get a value. And this is now starting to use, uh, so let's say you have happiness, right? And let's say you can choose it or you can divine it. What I find most people like is they divine it. You know, instead of choosing a value, you sort of like, pick the cards and all of a sudden you go, okay, well, detachment. I want to use detachment. Thinking and choosing the values isn't as fun as, as, as divining. And so let's say you go, okay, well, I want to uh, uh, place detachment on the lunar cycle. And that would mean that I'm very detached over the whole period of the lunar, the lunar cycle, but it may be better at the minute-to-minute -minute cycle, the present moment cycle each value actually functions differently at a different time cycle. So I have patience at my lifetime cycle, but I have truth at my timelessness cycle. So what it does is it actually changes the nature of how we interact with values just by adding another layer of time cycles. And when you have these nine time cycles and you're looking at business, you can actually structure the functions of the business by the time cycles. So 
there's 10 primary business functions, let's say in the inflow matrix. There's research, there's infrastructure, there's learning, there's operations, there's creativity, there's synergy, there's services, there's marketing, there's management, and there's communication. And what happens is research is linked into your lifetime cycle. Infrastructure is linked into your yearly cycle. Learning is linked into your lunar cycle. Operations is your daily cycle. The seasonal is your creativity. The hourly cycle is your synergy of your relationships. Your path, I mean your minute cycle is your uh, minute to minute path. And your marketing is your present moment always. And your management or stewardship is in timelessness. So what you're doing now is you're, you're, you're making a new map that I can show you here, where you're taking the, the, the nine time cycles, the 10 of them, and you're placing them just in a circle. So now you've got your lifetime cycle, your uh, yearly, your lunar, your daily. This is the seasonal, hourly, minute, present moment, and timelessness. And so your communication is all of them. So what happens is in business, right? I mean, if you're dealing with your resources, it's, you're looking over a period of a year to get all the things you need to, to build all what you got to do to do. But your products, your creativity could be seasonal, but dealing with your customers minute to minute, right there in front of you. So that's your services. So it's, 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 it's like a, I find it's, it's sort of hard for people to grasp to actually go from that flat land of same time everywhere in each function and then giving like research, you need long periods of time to see over generations if something is going to work. We think we figured out something in three months and then we introduce it into the market and all of a sudden it may, you know, uh, interact with this chemical and hurt everyone this way because we didn't do the research. well. So you have to be way more long term in research. But in marketing, it's like present moment now. We're always making something happen, and we're going to do the show, and we're going to show this poster. And marketers in general, right, they, they can handle lots of stuff in the present moment, while researchers are very slow and methodical. So the idea is that you can actually look at your gifts, your spiritual gifts, and start to program them into a business system. So the idea is you're moving from a commodity-based, product-based system into a human-based gift system where you're designing your ideal job based upon what your gifts are. What, what a concept. You know, you don't go to university and they tell you all these things about other people's things, but they rarely ask you, well, what are you good at and how can we nurture that skill or gift? That was never asked to me at all in my entire educational career. <laughs> oh, Good. Okay, I'll learn all this information that right now is irrelevant and then try to work for a job that doesn't fit who I am to live a life of a slave. You know, which how many people are doing right now? So the answer is to be a spiritual entrepreneur because we're spiritual beings. Our higher purpose for being here is actually to realize, I think, these values in real life experiences because we're immortal beings trapped, I think, on a prison planet trying to figure out what's going on. The big question, what's going on? And there seems to be in other places around the planet, you know, the, these people that economically control the banks and economically control the central banks for each country, and they're just fleecing everybody. They're, they're fleecing. They create these wars. They create all this insanity. Call them the dark forces. Call them whoever you want. But there's, they don't have anything in common with what I would want to do if I had billions of dollars. I wouldn't want to go blow up a country and steal all their crap. I'd want to build schools and hospitals and infrastructure for, you know, your own nation. So that said, you can map, like there's an, if you change this, this map is the same as this map. But what we've done is we just separated. Now we have your lifetime cycle, your yearly cycle, your seasonal cycle, your lunar cycle, your daily cycle, your hourly cycle, your minute cycle, your present moment cycle, and timelessness. And then what you can do is you can layer information on it. 
So I don't know if you've ever seen the Lao Shu diagram, but I mean, this is a three by three grid. It has every number on it. It's a very sort of famous you know, tic-tac-toe kind of grid, right? But in this whole operating system, it's color coded. And then this becomes like a foundation. And then what you can do is you can, you can layer information. You can, this is just layering all the ways the government is taking all our money away. Looking at, okay, you got inheritance tax, the salary tax, business taxes, the utilities, wasted time, sales tax, tickets, license fees. It all takes money, right? I mean, all this money, like in Canada, 42% of the income is going to the government, to the average person. How could anything run when 42% of your stuff is taken away by some person that is not really contributing, but actually hurting you along the way? So, so to me, what the spiritual entrepreneurs are doing is that we're building a whole new system. We're building a system that is ethically based. We're building a system that is linked to the galactic cycles. We're building a system that allows us to realize our true destiny as spiritual beings. And we are now moving from infancy into maybe early teens, I think, as a species where we have to take full responsibility for our impact on every other species on the planet, for our world, and stop looking to the governments and corporations to save us because their organizational structure is the problem. It's not the people, people just gotta make a living. But the systems that have been put in place, in place to oppress people are still there now and, and now they give them business names. But if you're, uh, taking out the old growth forest, if you're killing all the fish, if you're eliminating you know, our entire ecosystem, that's not business, that's just rape and pillage. So what, what, what I'm doing, what I was doing was basically 25 years of 10 hours a day working on an information system, asking, you know, use me as, as we can to come up with something that anyone can use to bring their gifts into the world by designing their ideal job and then fitting it into something called a shared knowledge community where 144 people actually use the operating system as uh, originators, entrepreneurs, uh, teachers, tech gurus, artists, healers, planetary guardians, uh, marketers, illuminators, mediators, and facilitators. And looking at those jobs as very kind of unique jobs, when you put the jobs together into a system, you now have a whole system. When you have a whole system, you have the synergy between the people. And what's lacking between the spiritual entrepreneurs is a real infrastructure for marketing and infrastructure to help all those independent uh, you know, coaches, healers, people who have a lot of juice to help the world but they're always uh they got problems finding their customers they got problems you know uh paying their bills they got they, they don't have the infrastructure and that's what i see what you're doing is you, you want to help people to build the infrastructure so that everyone can thrive with what they're doing and to me it, it comes from a blueprint it comes from you know long-term design and planning where you know, you're working on different levels. You're not just working on your day-to-day -day operations. You are designing the system that you're working within, and Infotech is a huge part of that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's, I, you, you, uh, you nailed it. That's, um, that's absolutely what we need. Whenever I got the download for Tribe Finder last uh, year, whenever I got that, it was very, very much um, the idea that, uh, healers are not marketers typically, right? Um, the, the healers of the world are typically not in the same, um, you're not in the same space, like the same head space, or even think really the same way as somebody that would be like an online marketer, which really friends, the revolution, like the, the paradigm shift is going to happen online. We have to use this thing called the internet um, the best way that we know how, because this is where it's happening. This is where our freedom to reach millions and millions of people, like not even lying, that's the number of people, right? Like we are able to actually reach everybody in a way 
that we weren't able to reach people before, right? So this, we have to take advantage of what we have. So um, the build and expand Facebook group being one, Tribe Finder um, being another one, that's, we're basically training people in there not basically, we are. We're training people in there about how to grow their business um, and how to actually create a sustainable lifestyle for themselves while still being healers. Because I think that the biggest problem um, with many healers these days is that they have to have a full-time nine-to-five job, right? And they can't, they, their healing is kind of like a side gig. But in reality, it really should be flip-flopped if not the nine to five just com completely being gone in the first place. They should be healing the majority of their time because if that's what we're here to do, then that's what we should be doing. We shouldn't be in cubicles and things like that. So what we're teaching is how to build that business, make it sustainable so you don't have to have the nine to five job and we're healing the world at the same time. It's all a win-win, win-win-win all over the board. I love your, um, and I know that we're already over time and I was, um, I'm, I'm supposed to go here in a minute, but um, I love what you're doing there. That's it, it um, just the creating of the systems, even in a spiritual world um, or in the uh, spiritual entrepreneurial world, um, the creation of systems within that business, um, that's, it's brilliant. I'm so glad that that, that came to you because um, there's, uh, it's just difficult, right? It's difficult to run a spiritual business, period. Um, but, but you definitely have to have those systems implemented and to be able to actually connect up with um, sort of the, um, the cosmic way of things. And I liked how you said you were, basically you're, you're going from um, it being a square to a circle, like we're actually putting data in via circles. Um, that's just, that, that's really cool. So thank you for presenting all that. I think somebody had a question. I'm going to go back real quick here. Um, feeling grateful. I stumbled across your message today. There's that. Um, Tanya said, well said. Responsibility is the ability to respond. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Carol said, well said. <laughs> Lau said, you got me, I got you. Heck yeah. That's what, that's what we're here for, right? We, we're, um, we're in a position to change the world, and if we don't do it, shame on us, right? Um, Tanya said, systems, that's the way to be able to let it flow. Yes, so you don't have to think too hard about anything. Uh, working together. I already love this group. <laughs> yeah, we be doing things in this group, doggone it. Well, um, since we are over time, Elijah, um, do you want to go ahead and share with them how they would be able to contact you specifically to learn more about this? Because I'm sure that you have piqued more than more than a lot of people's interest. So how would they be able to reach out to you personally? I guess email is probably the best. Uh, the next he list, T H E N E X I A L I S T at Zoho, Z O H O dot com. And if you're really wanting to talk with me, you can phone me at 778 455 3555. All right. There you have it, friends. You all uh, enjoy, what day is it? Tuesday? Time. It's not a real thing anyway, right? I guess it's Tuesday today is what they say. So um, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday if you're here in the States anyway. Um, thank you so much, Elijah. Have a good one. It really was a pleasure. Okay, thank you. It was quite an honor to be here and much love to everyone out there. Yes. Bye-bye, everybody.